when i say this raid garden of salvation was shocking i mean the dlc as a whole the raid scale and set pieces were shocking and of course the day one experience was too this raid taught players not to crutch on those forsaken auto reloading and buff stacking abilities not to get comfortable with performance and above all to understand just how difficult the contest modifier could be for better or worse so in today's video we'll discuss all of that and more prepare yourself grab a snacky snack and a nice gamer subs and get ready to be enlightened Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. And before we get to GOS, we need to talk about Plink. Guys, you know I'm super picky with sponsors, and so today, I'm happy to introduce Plink. We're giving away a PS5, and I genuinely like this app, man. Plink is an LFG site that basically analyzes all your stats, just to match you with other players around the world it's like the best lfg site that you'll get to use it'll match you with people with the same kds favorite times to play games the same games etc and i mean if you think about it one thing about destiny 2 is that people can't find raiders that are just like them so i think plink is the perfect solution for that and i think one of the coolest things that i like is it's almost like using twitter but for games info and achievements like i said plink and i are giving away a ps5 to one lucky winner one week from this video coming out so be on the lookout for that and click the link at the top of the description or in the pinned comment for the download link to go and check it out you guys can find me the code is on the screen right now please don't miss your chance use my promo code evan f right there and also just subscribe to my plink profile Good luck to everybody, and thank you to Plink for sponsoring this video. On to GOS. Shadow Keep was a small DLC that brought back the moon, so if you were a Destiny veteran, this wasn't as exciting for you as a Destiny 2 player experiencing the lunar views for the first time. However small the Shadow Keep DLC was, it was still extremely important. Shadow Keep marked the beginning of a new era for both Bungie and the Destiny community. Shadowkeep was Bungie's first shot at developing content that wasn't actively guided by Activision's creative and financial directives. Theoretically, this was supposed to be an exciting time for the Destiny community, and expectations were flying high. Looking back at it, Shadowkeep turned out... Uh, alright. You could tell the DLC was kind of less than Forsaken, but like a lot, and drip feed, and... Shadowkeep's development was knotted up with the implementation of Stadia and free-to-play. And well, because it shared its development process with Bungie's other priorities, it turned out kind of disappointing. Shadowkeep was made up of three campaign missions, a new activity called Nightmare Hunts, and a raid that would be released some days later. Let's break down what was disappointing and what the positives were. The story was over right when it got good. Go figure. Nightmare Hunts lacked aspirational loot. Once again, go figure. Welcome, and Guardian. Eververse got out of hand and way too greedy, like as it. she does. Master Nightfalls were real dope, but once again lacked the aspirational content that the community was so sorely needing. But, uh, strikes were kind of bangers without any loot incentive. So, yay, strikes? Shadowkeep also contained quest lines that rewarded the player with specific exotics. And while this is a nice thought, in the end, it also made players feel that exotics were too easy to acquire. Also, Shadowkeep was used as a launch point for Armor 2.0, an update that completely changed how endgame armor set building would work for the foreseeable future. The Armor 2.0 update wasn't the only thing that changed for the Destiny community, with auto-reloading mechanics removed for good and the brutal change to the way buffs and debuffs stacked, old damage dealing strategies had to be adapted to new metas. That being said, some things stayed the same. 
Pinnacle weapons were still the way to grind at the top when it came to power leveling, and the new raid would be giving day one raiders another chance to test their metal under the semi-new conditions of contest modifier. Yeah, that modifier which forced you to be at least 20 power levels under any given encounter, only this time against a final boss with much, much more health than that cuddle bear from Crown of Sorrow we all know as Galron. With the grind of some new, but not a ton of new content, how would the new raid play out? Well, Shadowkeep's raid, Garden of Salvation, was released on October 5th of 2019. It was the first raid released on a Saturday, which meant that everyone had a fairer chance to be prepped to participate. The essential teams were all there. You had your general big league boys, Redeem, Be Bold, Math Class, Tier 1, and Rare Drop, and also, a team that had always achieved top 5 to top 10, named Ascend. While the story of Garden of Salvation's raid race to first isn't quite as exciting as previous raids, the memories that remain of it are just as important. Garden of Salvation was a time of change and learning for all raiders, even the big dogs. So, without further ado, welcome to Garden of Salvation, the raid that shocked and enlightened the Destiny community. I like the music yeah. in this raid. So first step is to get through the portal. We have to open the portal first. Yeah, it's, it should be through us. It should be in Zara's It's zone. in front of us. Single file line. Adds are out, adds are out. Uh, there are... The stage has been set here, and with raiders entering the portal from the moon to the Black Garden, the air was filled with anxiety, nerves, and that Super Bowl game face for raiders. This was Bungie's first non-Activision raid, after all. So, without further ado, let's talk about that first encounter. The name of which was Cyclops One-Shot City on day one. This encounter was a balancing act between time management and survival. The faster you killed enemies, the quicker the encounter could be completed. The fire team would split into two teams, one of which stays with the boss in the beginning area, the Consecrated Mind, a giant Vex Harpy which was the Harpy in that PS4 strike in Destiny 1 that only PS4 got to use, that would vomit out weird looking Vex substances known as Voltaic Overload. Players from the first team had to pick up this debuff with a certain amount of time or it would wipe the whole team. Bear in mind, if a player picked up a Voltaic Overload, they received a timer to the left of their screen that ticks down until they can pick it up again. The second team was tasked with clearing the first room of adds, a champion, an angelic, and then opening the first door via creating a guardian tether from cube to door lock. A couple of guardians from the second team would stay behind to pick up any overloads the boss spits out, while everyone else moved forward to the next room to repeat the process. The first encounter was a simple routine made difficult by constantly spawning adds, cyclops, champions, and the angelic hydras. It was a matter of coordination and swiftness, and most of the day one raiders had it down pat fairly quickly. Is that there? Remember to cap Go up the door. Yeah, we, we got it, we got it. Alright, nice. Here, this is weird though, because if we get another one, we're gonna have to die. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, no. he disappeared, right, yeah. The cops that are spawning. Stop. I got you. Someone maybe. get the buff? Yeah. Anti will get this one. Alright, build it. One cool thing to note with this encounter is that it starts the raid on the other side from Destiny 1's Undying Mind Strike, and when the Undying Mind came back to Destiny 2, there was. No. A Mago Loop. Anyways, I digress onto the undergrowth. Yeah. Are these are some kind of jumping pads? Small decks. Uh, okay, you can go over here to the right side. There's a there's a lifting puzzle. But I'm gonna climb up the branches. <laughs> yeah, I love I this whole. Skull. This whole place oh, looks just oh. like Avatar: The Last Airbender. 
The undergrowth parkour puzzle between the first and second encounters was pretty cool, it was beautiful, and had pretty odd jump paths. Nearly maze-like. The secret chest day one raiders discovered drop mods and kind of shit gear. I like platformers a lot, and I like platforming in Destiny, but man, for some reason, this jumping puzzle gives me trouble, and I don't know if it's not direct or something, but it's different enough that it still gives me issues. It's like the only one that gives me issues. Anyways, on to the next encounter. Spire Defense. It's fine, just poke the wrong. Okay, there's a hydrant there. <laughs> you have to like hide through and stuff. You have barriers to hide this encounter was a great day one experience due to the new mechanics to master and the champions that teams had to take down they absolutely smacked and were complete tanks when it came to damage in order to take them down the drop off method was used where four of the six fire team members rushed to a hallway together and subsequently dropped the player off at each relay speaking of relays these were a completely new mechanic to destiny 2 one that players either loved or hated. What did you think? I think I've come around to like them over time, and they were kind of a cool, neat mechanic. The end goal of this encounter was, once again, simple. Each of the four relays needed to be protected against the Vex enemies, and required near constant guarding. However, these enemies had shields that could only be penetrated when a guardian was enlightened. Enlighten was another time buff that showed up on the left side of the screen and could be refreshed by tethering to a relay with at least one other guardian. With one guardian at each relay and a runner between relay 1-2 and relay 3-4, this encounter was about rhythm and routine. After angelics appear at each of the four relays at once, converge on the fifth central relay and defend it with the same Enlighten mechanic to victory. Kill it! We got it. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Mid right here. Fiber bubble, send the bubble. Angelic mid. Okay, we're done. Got it. That's it. Blown up. Oh, wait. We, we, got got we, got we got it, we got it, we got it. This felt like an expansion of Vault of Glass's Confluxes and honestly is a way better experience. Have fun with Confluxes when those come back, by the way, everyone. They're a great time doing a loading screen. Anyways, day one, this was the first check for noobs wanting to race with the decent to good teams, and the drop off really started here for a lot of day one racers. On to the third encounter killing the damn consecrated mines. Oh, oh. yeah, that's false. Oh. What does that mean? There he is. Watch for steps in this fight, please. This encounter was the biggest check for players as most LFGs were goners due to the boss taking three to four phases to complete. Many a player would die to Moat's team's Minotaurs. No way, dude. Eyes teams had to learn eyes and not die to dumb parkour mistakes or random supplicants ambling through. Funnily enough, people believed this harpy to be the final boss at one point because you chased it through the first encounter and because it was that difficult for the average raider at the time. Once again, the fire team split up into teams made up of three guardians each. Moats teams and eyes teams. Moats team was tasked with killing minotaurs that dropped five moats each. On day one, the 5 10 10 5 strategy was the most often implemented, meaning that the first guardian on Moat's team picked up only 5 moats instead of 10 to get to the relay station faster before things could sacrifice. The subsequent two would pick up 10 moats to deposit, with the final guardian who was at the station first running back and getting the last 5. Most team members upon deposit received the same enlightened buff from the previous encounter and used that to deal with the same shielded adds trying to sacrifice at the relay. Eyes team had the task to keep the harpy boss from wiping the entire team with the voltaic overload. If you picked up the spit, you could see which eyes glowed as the harpy boss prepared to kill you. 
all you had to do was call out inner or outer and all three on eyes teams shoot near simultaneously to burn out the eyes in time to save the trap member being 20 power below with low light guns meant that it was important to call out the right eyes and shoot at the right time complete your required duties fast enough and with as few deaths as possible 2000 years later you were at damage the consecrated mind actually ran away from you like a puss at damage but at a huge crit spot and multiplier making precision weapons very very viable you gotta remember there was no xenophage no divinity and players didn't know that breaking eyes faster meant more damage and avoiding wipes firing line snipers and izanagi's burden would come up huge here rinse and repeat the encounter three to four times on day one and consecrated mind would fall Dead. <laughs> we did it! Nice. Now we're fine. He's dead. Nice. Be careful, he might, he might still last, last end, get ready. Maybe there's something. Alright, we have a... Nice. Let's get to the door. This encounter was all about coordination, survivability, and above all, time management. Honestly, you're able to see these themes throughout the entirety of this raid. Now the parkour area between third encounter and final boss is absolutely gorgeous. You have this portal to shit on your teammates and LFGs with. You have waterfalls, dying goblins, trees with a secret chest, and a huge Vex windmill. This feels like a massive piece of downtime and platforming, similar to a raid that we just covered, which I referenced this area. See, I don't, don't think I forgot about this raid or that raid. Hey, hey, I'm here. But I gotta say, one thing that I felt like also fits the theme of the entire raid is that it feels like development time ran out here. Like there was supposed to be another encounter. It had all the ingredients of an abandoned encounter. Big open area. Bad quality textures. Anyways, the windmill skip was sick and the music... As usual, incredible. Like I said, this would serve as a nice piece of downtime for raiders who got over the hump of Consecrated Mind. But man, if there was another encounter here, that would have been sick. And now, the piece de resistance. Allow me to introduce you to the Sanctified Mind, an extremely controversial at the time encounter that cost many people the world's first belt. That sounds like a final oh, boss. Yeah. That is definitely a final boss. Oh my god! Oh, this looks so cool! Holy butts, dude. What? Not swords and In hindsight, the Sanctified Mine is an incredibly simple boss fight. I can break it down with four sorta of long sentences. So hear me out. I'm only gonna say this once. You can always, you can always rewind. There are three teams. Moat Team 1, Moat Team 2, and Build Team. Moat Team 1 and 2 have to go into each side once, either the Mango Meta side first or the Blue Raz side first. Kill adds bring back their flavored moats and bank them into the appropriately flavored relays. Build Team needs to be able to pull Moat Team out so they can bank and make sure the ground stays ground and doesn't get turned into giant puddles of milky vex. What, the, what is this? I get that it's like Vex milk, but like, who in their right mind decided to turn the Vex into cows? Jesus. And kill Cyclopses and adds so they don't sacrifice. 
rinse and repeat the process tether the right flavor relay to stun the boss and you're golden to damage see that's not too bad right yeah not so simple on day one though bud we have to go in no reminder day one teams racing for world's first were at least 20 power levels under so everything hit hard plus contest also adds damage from seemingly every angle and makes you hit for a little bit less too to add on to that consecrated mind was a very hard boss for sure but sanctified mind was even harder which to me is in direct contrast to Atrax versus Tanix on day one of Deepstone Crypt. Furthermore, mechanics weren't solidly understood on day one. At one point, teams believed tethers didn't work on the boss when in actuality, the relay wasn't full and wasn't activated the whole way through. Remember, you needed 30 motes to get that relay to work on him. Cyclops has also had a field day one-shotting players left and right. Teams thought you had to go into both sides at once or you'd be too slow, and that seriously was not true. Contest modifier absolutely crushed teams' morale here in new ways which was unfelt before. This boss knocked them down hard. Healing ramp just in case. Here we go. <laughs> They're down like six. Are we ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. What happened? Can you... Yeah, can you dude, I literally have no ammo. This is... Connecting. It's not connecting. It's just not connecting. Yeah. In my opinion, Senk didn't quite feel like a final boss in the same vein that others did for reasons I just can't fully explain. Maybe because there wasn't any real connection to the story, like he was just another randomly named baddie. In the end, only one team could win as the race got tighter the most survival oriented and consistent team won. Red, it's red. Move to right, move to right side. Move to right, we're doing defense from here. Everyone's I gonna be tethered. Well. I have a well for you guys if you need it, by the way. No, we're, good. we're good. My well. My well. Get in, get weapons, get weapons, play. I'm sorry, I doubted your bob skills. <gasps> what? No, dude! I have the rest, I have the rest. Pull, pull left, I can rest that. Come on, wake up this voice. He's so dead, please don't miss. I have shields, I have shields, I have shields, shoot, shoot. Let's go! Let's go! Come on, boys! Let's go! Yo, 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 wait, wait, wait. 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 Wait, go, 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 go. go. It's a creepy bitch. What is, what is this, dude? It's a chest. Oh. No, wait, 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 no, 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 wait, 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 go, 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 I gotta say, man, Ascend absolutely deserved this one. They are one of the most consistent Destiny raid teams, and even in Deepstone Crypt, they came in third and ninth place. So once again, extremely consistent. To Ascend, it was beyond an incredible feeling to finally achieve a world's first. They didn't actually realize how fast and how well they did during the accomplishment of Garden of Salvation until after they had finished it. Some of the members, high off of their victory, were even doubtful about their actual placement as first in the race. Though they struggled somewhat with connecting the mechanics from previous encounters to those in the final boss room, they prevailed against all odds within two hours and beat what is considered one of the most difficult day one bosses in Destiny history. Hardcore raiders knew that this win was well deserved by these players because they're absolutely nuts. To put it bluntly, a lot of the Goliaths that you were used to seeing in the top two or top three actually struggled a lot here. It was definitely a big shock to the Destiny community.
One upsetting fact that also kind of shocks me, but maybe it shouldn't, is that net limiting for day one emblems was a rampant issue and a strategy for many cheaters, since the mechanics on PC were very net limitable with the Gambit-esque mechanics, which unfortunately a lot of LFG groups would be seeing for the rest of the year. Also, this was a teaser ending, which is not always fun. Hate getting teased in raids? I just want closure on them instead of, oh man, look what the darkness statue can do. Ending a vanilla campaign, five gum comes back to life or something. Either way, this is a huge accomplishment for Ascend and one of the hardest day one raids, I think, to date. One that we won't forget for better or for worse. All right, guys. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh man, day one raid race, kind of weird. Maybe not as good as some of the other ones, but what am I really here for, bro? Am I here for the day one raid juice or am I here for the loot? And the loot in this raid was subpar. Yeah, there was no heavy weapons to go after. Weapons were only just as good as the regular weapons outside of the raid pool. And once again, there was an acute lack of aspiration for the player base to return to this raid outside of the day one excitement. The Divinity Exotic quest puzzles were cool, but quest exotics have never been my cup of tea personally. I've always preferred RNG exotics with a little bit of bad luck protection. The gear was... Oh, oh, oh no, they committed the cardinal sin. The gear was an Eververse remake from yeah. Curse of Osiris. I'm not joking. What, what, what happened here? And I think just overall, a lot of people were pretty bummed out by Garden of Salvation outside of day one, because in the end, Garden of Salvation really only feels fun when contest mode is on, when you're doing a three-man challenge, or when you just choose to be underleveled. At power level, this raid to me is kind of a snooze fest, and is shocking that it got put into the game at this difficulty, and really begs the question of contest and the day one emblem's purpose. If the day one experience has contest mode, that means Bungie has to think of raids in terms of contest and making them so very easy after day one is all over. It might be better if contests stayed a modifier for bonus rewards, but that might piss off the community, so I'll save that for a different video. Speedruns of this raid were and still are very cool, and some of the challenges that have been completed, such as two-man and three-man final bosses, three-man flawless completions, are also very, very cool. But overall, I think we can all agree this raid suffers from the good old day one treatment. This raid might be the most demanding for a lot of teams and has the highest skill gap as far as damage on Sanctified, but that still doesn't justify the rest of the encounters really not being all too fun outside of the first few times that you do it. I'm still playing Deepstone Crypt, even though that raid is very, very easy compared to this one. And I think that speaks levels on the mechanics themselves for this raid. I also believe that this raid is missing a novelty encounter that differs from the normal encounters. Garden of Salvation plays out almost like smaller raids or a raid layer, because it solely builds on previous encounters without throwing you off with something completely new. Take for example, the Siege Engine being really different from the rest of Wrath of the Machine. Or even in Deepstone Crypt, every single encounter, although it shares mechanics, actually uses those mechanics in a new and meaningful way that makes you feel like you're not just doing the same thing. Either way, that is the Garden of Salvation raid, and, well, that's the final raid that we have. For now, until Vault of Glass comes back, or something else, I have no clue. Either way, dudes, thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting me through the series of raid videos. I'm honestly gonna miss it now that it's done, but these videos were a ton of work and it's kind of nice to take a little break from doing these raid videos for a while. I hope you guys will stick with me as I embark on new frontiers in regards to content. Not only just new content in Destiny, I'm talking about other games too. I feel like Destiny's in a spot right now and we'll talk about it in another video where I just wanna expand my horizons, man. Flap my wings a little bit, you know what I mean? I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty excited about the future, man.
thank you guys so much for watching and if you did enjoy this video be sure to subscribe and check me out on twitch every once in a while man we're always streaming over there bro and enjoy the bloopers have a wonderful day goodbye Mmm. Kill these ads. Kill the shrimp. Here we go. And go. Look at that Swords. unholy f damage. That's Swords. disgusting. <laughs> anyway Merry that... Christmas Yeah well no, no. Oh look at that we covered it makes it terrible on the screen That's just inconvenient really isn't it No I'm I'm definitely here Um still detained <laughs> oh, I guess we're just no. <laughs> Wait, the bus is teleported. Wait, 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 he just teleported <laughs> yeah. on top of me. What? Yeah. What the?